Hi everyone, my name is Greg Vosper and uh, this is our uh, group built RV10 project. Uh, it's uh, Charlie Foxtrot uh, Echo Alpha Romeo. It's going to be C Fear is the registration on this aircraft. Uh, we're well underway right now. We're at the point where we're uh, uh, getting ready to put the cabin top on. And uh, as you can all imagine, there's a fair bit of work involved with that. Uh, there's several videos out there right now, but uh, just like to uh, give a little bit of our, our perspective on uh, uh, what we did so far. Uh, we're looking to solicit some input, uh, possibly, but I'll give you a quick overview of what we've done till now. So, um, as you can see, the uh, forward fuselage uh, skin is not uh, permanently attached. Uh, I've done a fair bit of reading. It says uh, a lot of people say not to even attempt uh, to install your avionics with uh, with this in place because you're up and under under the dash and uh, uh, it's uh, very tedious to do that. So. This holds up the whole cabin installation process. We, uh, once we have the avionics installed, uh, uh, then we can go ahead with the, the forward fuselage, uh, putting it on permanently and uh, uh, putting the cabin top on. We are going with the uh, dual screen AFS system and uh, an Aero Sports, uh, um, some of the carbon fiber interiors, interior parts. We're doing uh, um, the center console, the uh, uh, instrument panel, and the overhead console as well. So that those parts are ordered and they'll be coming shortly but uh, the tail's all done on this and uh, yeah come on around here one of the things I wanted to show some of the viewers is uh, just some of the tools that I've used for uh, trimming the uh, fiberglass cabin top and uh, I've seen all kinds of different views some people have used oscillating tools which I think is kind of ridic ridiculous to use that Dremel tools way too small for the job so uh, what I've done here I found it to work quite well is a simple uh, steel cutoff wheel uh, on a four and a half inch angle grinder um, these are commonly available everywhere but uh, watch your fingers use a dust mask and uh, use safety glasses for sure uh, there's stuff lying everywhere it makes a mess of uh, any anyone's shop this is uh, uh, I think it's a 60 grit four and a half inch uh, flapper disc and it comes in very handy as well for taking off a lot of material all at once and uh, I've used that a fair bit. Uh, this is a quarter inch electric die grinder. This is just from Harbor Freight and uh, these are also flapper uh, flapper wheels. I got these at Amazon. They're, they're cheap and they're simple to get in various uh, diameters and these uh, really help out for doing the radiuses around the windows and smoothing that, that, uh, that out. Uh, moving over here, one of the, I think was one of the tools that helped me out the best uh, was a, uh, a nice straight sanding block that I made just out of a piece of straight lumber, reinforced with another one on the back. And uh, the abrasive material is just a, a belt sander from Home Depot and it's contact cemented onto the wood. It doesn't matter if there's a joint, but just put contact cement on uh, the belt as well as the wood and it makes a very straight uh, sanding board. I've got several of them here. I've used all of them, but uh, the real thing that you need that for is to sand to shape the cabin. It has to fit very precisely in this section right here. Uh, also, we used a, a framer square on that to, uh, to make sure that everything stays in the same plane because uh, you have to sand the cabin top this way as well as this way to get everything remained in plane. I'll show you that really quickly over here. Here's the uh, fiberglass cabin top of the RV-10 and uh, as you've probably heard there's a fair bit of work involved with uh, getting to fit. Uh, you're going to take it on and off uh, many times uh, from my experience anyways. But uh, we're just looking for some comments uh, to see how other uh, builders have uh, gone about this. We are uh, going to go forward with the McMaster car uh, uh, door seal so uh, that's uh, one of the uh, parts I'm not 100% clear on yet. I'd like to have some input on that if, if possible. But uh, as you can see right here, uh, I've been uh, busy trimming to uh, the, the flange where all the windows go should be uh, is generally around three quarters of an inch. So I've used the uh, long board sanders uh, to that point. Uh, this is uh, the intersection area here where uh, the cabin top interfaces with the uh, the forward deck, uh, it takes a bit of fiddling around to get it just right, but I use the, uh, for the most part, the block sanders and uh, the uh, flapper wheel on the angle grinder to, uh, to get that right. Um, the 
the door openings are uh, they're starting to be trimmed to shape. Uh, the rear windows are not bad right now, but I, I did use the flapper wheel on the die grinder to get those pretty close, as well as a, a, a hand uh, block sander. Um, this is uh, turn it over here and show you. I reckon I'm just going to turn this over real quick. Actually, we can see on the back before we turn it over, we can see where it's been uh, uh, machine counter sunk to accept the uh, the dimples from the uh, uh, the fuselage side skins as well as the uh, the rear deck uh, interface. So we'll just turn it over real quick. So what I wanted to show mostly was uh, using this sanding block. A lot of material came off of this area here and just worked it back and forth, back and forth with uh, uh, someone usually standing here just to hold it down. Uh, the other thing they say in the instructions is they want to uh, maintain this, this in plane so uh, I spent a fair bit going back and forth this way to keep, to keep that square. So uh, a long board is, is really what you need, that's the tool for the job and uh, repeatedly we're checking this area here to be uh, to be a 90. We use a framer square on that and uh, continually we measure measure back and forth to see if it's going to fit in the opening in the fuselage. Uh, just a word of advice, be very careful. This, this area becomes razor sharp after it's been sanded and you will cut your fingers off with that so be very very careful. Use gloves whenever you can. And uh, I think that's about it. Uh, shot we're going to show you actually dropping it in place onto the fuselage. I don't know if there's any uh, videos of that taking place on uh, YouTube so we'll see you in a minute. of how, how it's supposed to look in its raw form before it's fiberglassed into place. You can see it's a, it's a pretty tight fit all, all the way along. And again, it gets bedded into uh, adhesive or flux or whatever we're going to do. Uh, again, you can't put it into place with this uh, section of the skin. and it, uh, it goes in after the cabin top is in place. But we're almost at the point where uh, it's going to be bolted down for good. And we can move forward with the uh, uh, fiberglassing in the window and uh, doing the door work, which uh, <laughs> is going to be an adventure. But anyways, that's about it. That's what it should look like. <laughs> and hopefully it'll fly one day soon. And once again, is, uh, I'm Greg Vosper and this is... Uh, C-Fear. We're building this in uh, Brampton, Ontario, Canada.